and welcome to this edition of From the Top at the Open Networking Summit right here in Santa Clara, California. We're here with Mark Rusinovich. He's the CTO of Microsoft Azure. And Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Uh, Microsoft Azure has a very unique and interesting SDN play. Can you tell us about that to start off? Yep, so one of the things that has driven us into SDN is just the requirements of a public cloud that operates at the kind of hyperscale that Microsoft Azure has gotten to. Obviously, we looked at and we started with physical network appliances and we realized that having the management plane, the control plane, and the data plane all tightly coupled together on single box devices that could only scale up, not scale out, was just not a way to meet the needs that we had. And so this pushed us very quickly into defining, de developing our own software-defined networking technologies. And that's how we get to this kind of hyperscale network where customers can bring network abstractions and then we plumb that down into the servers themselves which act as the virtual switches. Now I um, heard this in a previous interview you did. You said the network should adapt to application requirements and not the other way around. What did you mean by that? What I meant is that we're seeing a lot of migration of existing applications to the cloud. And so one of the expectations our customers have is that they're not going to have to spend a lot of time re-architecting for the cloud to make those applications that have been working great on-prem work in the cloud. So they expect abstractions that they can map back to what they were doing on-prem. They expect that the network is going to perform in a way similar to what they got back on-prem. And that means that we need to deliver network capabilities that are similar to what they experienced as enterprise networks. Uh, Mark, over the last couple of days, we've been discussing with various people uh, from various uh, er areas on the supply chain, if you will, about the true value of F SDN and NFE technologies. Um, from your perspective at Microsoft, what is, what is that value? Well, that value is for customers to be able to basically come with the point of the mouse on our portal or uh, execution of a command line to command get their own virtual data center, in this essence, a network that is completely isolated to the resources that they put into the network. It's second, them being able to bring network appliances in a virtualized form into those networks, and so that they can do kind of value-add functionality like DDoS protection or web application firewall or network intrusion detection in the same way that they've been doing it on-prem with the same kind of capabilities. And then third, it's the ability to connect back to their on-premises networks and have the public cloud network be essentially an extension of their enterprise networks. And we do that with them being able to bring a network overlay with their own IP address ranges, for example, into the public cloud. According to Microsoft's Eric, Tro Eric's, Eric Troop, and I hope I pronounced his, his last name correctly, he said as networks converge, the distinction between virtual cloud computing and virtual networking will fade. What do you think he meant by that? What I think he meant by that is that if you take a look at computing on-prem, it's been very much the network exists, you bring virtual servers or physical servers and you plumb them into the network in a very static way. And what we're seeing in the cloud is uh, the evolution of declarative models to describe complete applications, including their network requirements. And so in some sense, the computer and the network have been something that's been configured separately by different people in an on-prem world. In the cloud world, you have an application that brings along its network requirements and then expects the cloud to go realize them. Again, over the last couple of days, we've been asking these folks uh, here at the ONS Summit um, about the trigger point, if you will, between, I guess, the R&D phase of SDN and NFE and now really the deployment phase of those technologies. What do you think that trigger point or that tipping point was? Well, uh, speaking for the, from the Microsoft Azure perspective, the tipping point really was, like I said, having to meet the requirements that we had of building a scalable public cloud. And so we went very quickly into, hey, is there anything off the shelf we could take? And realizing that there was nothing that, meet, that met those needs at the time we were having to face them. And so we had to go in from a research R&D perspective very quickly into getting things out into production. So this is how we developed our virtual networking technologies, our software load balancing technologies, our virtual gateway technologies, all being driven by how do we get these features out into public cloud quickly very quickly from research right into production. So you think that SDN and NFE started um, a little while back for a business reason or for a technical reason or both? Both actually. So from a business reason, it is, like I said, uh, we talked about having customer requirements for their expectations of network capabilities being brought into a public cloud where it's on-demand self-service. And it's also from a technical capability perspective and us being able to get the kind of scale that we see in a hyperscale public cloud like Azure, where we've got hundreds of thousands of servers in a, a particular region, and the virtual networks need to span those hundreds of thousands of servers, potentially. Uh, we did a uh, SDN part one uh, documentary a couple of years back, and uh, people that we talk to tend to associate NFE or even SDN with, with carriers, with telcos. 
um, or service providers, mm -hmm. and now they're associating them with the enterprise community. Why do you think that is? Absolutely. I think one of the things that people have realized, when public, which public cloud computing has really highlighted, is that IT can really be a business enabler. It, and IT needs to be agile to move with the requirements of businesses. And so we've gone from a world of static infrastructure and static networks into one where the IT customers, the enterprise customers, expect to be able to get the same kind of self-service and elasticity that from their on-prem cloud, from their on-prem infrastructure as they get from the public cloud. And so you're seeing cloud technologies move down into the enterprise networks, and that includes SDN as a key part of that. At the Open Networking Summit, everyone's talking about open sourcing and open standards. Do you think um, industry is moving towards open sourcing and open standards as quickly as everyone would, would like to believe so? I think so. I mean, I think you're seeing a lot of uh, tech, a lot of evolution, a lot of innovation happen in the open source world. That said, I think that there's still a lot of places where people are delivering value secret sauce in a closed source way and then maybe augmenting open source with this closed source value add. Uh, speaking from a Microsoft perspective, I can tell you that a lot of the technologies we've had to build have been very p for purpose in Microsoft's case for our requirements. And we look all, all the time at what parts are secret sauce, what parts can we make available to open source. So you think that um, uh, hardware equipment providers that saw this movement towards STN making their hardware more commoditized and, and seeing that as a challenge may see that as an opportunity now. I think they have to see it as an opportunity. They have to move up the value chain and to provide services on top of that underlying hardware technology. A great example of how we've, Microsoft's contributed is the Open Compute platform where we've uh, donated our own server designs to that so that that benefits the whole world. Of course, that means that those designs which we're running at hyperscale and proven aren't ones where there's a lot of innovation to drive and people can pick that up and, and take it themselves and then they need to put value on top of that. Mark, a lot of forecasting um, of SDN and NF NFE technologies and the impact on services and the impact on future technologies. I want to ask you about the impact of SDN and NFE on infrastructure as a service. So we're seeing a move of existing applications from on-prem to the cloud, and with that they bring this infrastructure as a service type of abstraction where they say they want a virtual machine and they want that virtual machine to plug into a network in a certain way. What you're going to see is an evolution kind of driven and enabled by SDN, which is up-leveling to an application focus rather than an infrastructure focus, where the application specifies its requirements. And rather than specifying virtual machines and specific networks, they'll specify their requirements and let SDN and the cloud controllers drive the requirements in fulfilling those applications. So a uh, higher level of abstraction that will enable better agil agility uh, for the enterprise. Mark, it was a nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, thanks.